All right, let's do some homework problems. Oh, oh, we got a runaway, runaway text box. Let's do some homework problems. We're going to start with number 12. We're going to do a lot on this video. Okay. Number 12 says, find F inverse or F of X is 2X plus 3 divided by 5X plus 4. So to find the inverse function, we're going to write this in y is an x. And then we're going to switch all the x's and all the y's. And that's how we find our inverse function. Again, this is for the regular, the original, and this is for the inverse. So different x's and y's. To solve this equation, we're going to multiply both sides by the denominator. Another way you can think about this step, if you'd like, if this makes more sense, is you can think about it as cross multiplying. That also works, x divided by 1. Then one side is x times 5y plus 4, and the other side is 1 times 2y plus 3. Now we need to distribute, get all the y's together, get everything else on the right. So if we distribute, that's going to give us 5xy plus 4x, and we need to get that y over, let's, I'll do it next, next step. So now the y needs to go over here, and the x needs to go over there. So we're going to do that, subtract 4x from both sides, and also subtract 2y from both sides. When we do that, we're going to have 5xy minus 2y on the left, and 3 minus 4x on the right. We're almost done. Let's factor out a y from the left-hand side. 5x minus 2 is what we're left with. 3 minus 4x over here. And divide both sides by that coefficient of y. And we'll get 3 minus 4x divided by 5x minus 2. <coughs> Excuse me. And as long as x is not 2 fifths, we're okay. This is our inverse function. 3 minus 4x divided by 5x minus 2, as long as x is not equal to 2 fifths. Because if x is equal to 2 fifths, we're dividing by 0, that's no good. All right, that's the inverse function here. If you uh, compose these functions with each other, you could check your work. Right, you could do f of g, sorry, f of f inverse, and it should simplify down to x. Good way of checking your work. You could also look at this graphically to check your work as well. Um, you could kind of go over here and say, let's graph each of these functions. The functions 2x plus 3 divided by 5x plus 4 is that symmetric with the inverse, which is 3 minus 4x divided by 5x minus 2. Are these two functions the same, like reflections about that orange line? And yeah, they are. Cool. Great. A way to visualize these. If we look at any point on the green, switch the inputs and the outputs negative 1.5 comma 0 could also be on the blue graph. Let's do another one, number 20. So number 20, that's going to be... Use a graphing utility to determine whether each function is 1 to 1. We want to graph the cubed root of 3x plus 1. And again, cubed root of 3x plus 1. Whoa, not that. I think on Desmos, it's a lot easier to graph things, cubed roots, by using exponents of 1 third. Remember, an exponent of 1 half is the same as a square root, an exponent of 1 third is the same as a cubed root, and so on. So is this function 1 to 1? Does it pass the horizontal line test? And yes, even if we zoom out, any horizontal line we draw 
only crosses this graph once. This is one to one. This will have an inverse function. And if you want to show your work, you could say this passes the horizontal line test. Let's look at 24. 24 says determine whether it's one to one. Well, I can draw a horizontal line right here that crosses the graph many, 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 infinitely many times. It fails the horizontal line test. It fails the horizontal line test. So that means it's not one to one. And there's no inverse function. Let's do 29. 29 says sketch the graph of f inverse. So let's copy down this graph first, and then let's give it a shot. So the given graph starts at 2, 0. As, or let's use the same units, right? Have this be two, four, six, eight. Oh no, not again. And two, four, six, eight. Using the same scale, it's going to make things a lot easier to copy down. So it starts at two comma zero. It passes through six comma two. And uh, that's the only easy thing to see. Like four is like three quarters of the way, but just give it the same shape like so. So to graph the inverse, we just look at all the points for f, again, 2, 0, and 6, 2. Those are the only real easy points that we have for f. And say, what are the corresponding points for f inverse? Just switch all the inputs and the outputs. Switch the x's and the y's. 2, 0 becomes 0, 2. 6, 2 becomes 2, 6. And graph those points. 0, 2 is right here. 2, 6 is right here. Draw the same shape. Draw the same shape. And hopefully, if we draw a diagonal line, y equals x, the red and the white should be the same thing, just reflected around that yellow line. And they are. So that is right here, f inverse. I always do this. And this is f. Ta-da! Let's do number 30 while we're here. Very closely related. 30 says, find f of 6 and f inverse of 2. So f of 6 says, when the x value is 6, what is the y value for f? So when the x value is 6, that's here. The y value is 2. So as soon as we write that down, we know the answer to this. F takes 6 to 2, so F inverse has to take 2 back to 6. Inverses undo the other functions. Another way of looking at this would be to say, well, we have the graph of F inverse. F inverse of 2 is equal to 6. Or you could look at the graph of f. When the y value is 2, what is the x value? The x value is 6. A couple of different ways of doing that. Three that I counted. Let's do one more problem. Oh, interesting. First off, why is this 3.7.2? Second off, I haven't done the application video yet, but you won't know that. Unless I tell you, <laughs> because the <laughs> application video <laughs> will be before this one. This is definitely 3.7.5. All according to plan. They'll never know. <laughs> All right, let's do problem number 46. That was a close one, Jason, but I think you pulled it off. I think you fooled them. <laughs> Problem number 46. The circumference C of a circle 
is a function of its radius given by c of r equals 2 pi r. r is the radius, c is the circumference. Express the radius of a circle as a function of its circumference. So it wants us to express the radius as a function of its circumference. This circumference function of radius, this radius function of circumference. It wants us to find the inverse. Call this function r of c. So let's do that first and then do the second half. Okay, so normally we write things with x's and y's and switch them. Well, here, let's write things with c's and r's, and let's just solve for r. Okay, let's not switch them here. You don't actually ever have to switch them necessarily, but uh, we're usually more experienced solving for y, which is why we often do switch them. But we rename it at the end to f inverse anyway, so uh, that's kind of what's going on. So if we solve for r, we want r by itself, divide both sides by 2 pi. They cancel on the right. Now we're just left with r is just c divided by 2 pi. Okay, so this is our function. Just like sometimes we write y equals and sometimes we write f of x equals, that's what we're going to do here. We have r equals, but we can also write it in function notation. This is the variable r. This is the function notation, r of c. This just really, this circled thing right here, really just takes home, brings home. I don't know what phrase I'm looking for. It emphasizes that this is a function of variable c. And it's the circumference divided by 2 pi. That's the first part of this question. The second part says find what r is when evaluated at 36 pi. Find r when the circumference is 36 pi. Well, we just plug it in. c is now 36 pi. When we plug it in, we get 36 pi divided by 2 pi. The pi's cancel, and this becomes 18 divided by 1 which is just 18. They give us units here. They do not give us units. So we'll answer when the circumference is 36 pi units, whatever those units are, the radius is 18 units, whatever those are. These are all of our answers. Another very related answer to this one, right, is if r of 36 pi equals 18, that means c, the function c, when the radius is 18, circumference is 36 pi. That's the relationship between functions and their inverse with these applications. Let me know if you have any questions.